And welcome to The Verdict. I'm Kent Myers. Uh, Mick Cornett will not be here this week, nor the next, but uh, we are pleased you're here. We're glad you join us every week, we hope, uh, for shows that we think you'll be interested in. This week and next week, we have the same guest coming back for repeat performance. The Honorable uh, Ernest Istook, the congressman from the 5th District, will be joining us this morning. And he'll be wearing his hat as congressman this morning. Uh, next week, when he comes back to join us again, he'll be wearing his hat as candidate for governor. And we know that you'll be interested in hearing what he has to say. He has been in Congress for long enough to know exactly what's going on. He's been in Oklahoma forever almost, and uh, uh, we think that you'll have a, a very interesting time listening to uh, Congressman Istook. And uh, we want to bring to you people who are making news and who want to make more news here in Oklahoma so that when you go to the ballot box to vote, you'll know what your verdict ought to be. So let's go to a break, and when we come back, we'll meet Congressman Ernest Istook. For one Oklahoma-based company, success didn't happen overnight. Initially, the days were long, 80-hour weeks common. As we grew, we wanted to share our success, and the ideals of corporate and civic responsibility found a welcome home. Today, we're the largest investor in the Sooner State, and a source for exciting, new, high-quality jobs. We're Chesapeake Energy, committed to building a better Oklahoma. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. Satellite go out again? Yeah, rain. But this is just as fun. Don't live in satellite denial. Get the reliability you expect from Cox, your friend in the digital age. It is too. There you go. Cox Communications está buscando empleados entusiásticos y motivados. Disfruta de nuestros beneficios, pago competitivo, grandes ventajas y oportunidades para el adelanto. Si desea hacer una diferencia, tenemos un lugar para usted aquí con Cox Communications. Visítanos en el internet o llame para ver qué oportunidades tenemos para usted aquí en Cox. It is too. Cox Communications está orgulloso de ofrecer igualdad de empleos. Welcome back to The Verdict. I'm Kent Myers, and across the table is a very familiar face to you, I'm sure. Our guest, Ernest Iztook, the Honorable uh, Congressman from the 5th uh, fifth fifth. District for uh, 14 years. Uh, Congressman Iztook is a graduate of Baylor University uh, in journalism and uh, is a lawyer, got his law degree from Oklahoma City University. He served uh, as a uh, uh, municipal, he served at both the municipal, uh, state, and federal levels, almost all levels of government in one capacity or another. Uh, he is uh, uh, currently in Congress serving on a number of important committees. He's uh, got his finger on the pulse of what's going on in Oklahoma and how that uh, uh, relates to what's going on in Washington. We are very pleased to have you for your first visit, and we hope we know it's not your last because we know we'll have you next week, but we hope can't. we'll have you again after that. Thanks. I appreciate the opportunity. And, you know, when you recount the list of things I've done, another thing, and this was on local level that I really enjoyed, was when I was the chairman of the library system that operates all the public libraries in, in central Oklahoma. Uh, that was a special labor of love. Well, one thing that, that uh, struck me about your resume uh, from a qualification standpoint, and I'm not trying to get ahead to next sure. week's show, but you've served as a municipal, you know, on the city council of War Acres. Right. You served at state government. Right. Uh, uh, an additional legal advisor to David Bourne. You mm -hmm. served as chairman of the Alcoholic Beverage Control Board. Uh, you served in the House of Representatives as an elected representative. You're now uh, serving in Congress. You've seen government at all levels. Right. 
And I won't pretend it's always pretty, but yes, I've seen it. <laughs> uh, what's, what was the most, uh, in, in your experience, what was the most uh, uh, enjoyable for you at those municipal, state, and federal level? Can you? Well, let's, let, maybe we can recount you know, some from each level. For example, okay. I mentioned when I was the library system chairman. Uh, that's when the computer system uh, was established that everybody uses now. I mean, Oklahoma City was one of the first places where you could go online, find out what's in the library, and place a reserve on it. Then when it's brought to the library nearest you, you get a, a, a postcard in the mail. You don't have to go to the library and thumb through a card catalog or try to figure out where in, on all these multitudes of libraries we have locally, where is the book or the other material that I want? Uh, I was in charge of that process, and that was uh, something that I really uh, enjoyed doing. On the federal level, uh, you know, we can talk about things that I've done in Congress that are important to the nation, and we can talk about things that I've done that are important uh, to Oklahoma. And it, it, it's both of those, so we can, we can go a lot of different directions. Yeah, well, we'll try to do that. Yeah. Let's talk about something that is, that is a difficult subject for most people to, uh, <clears throat> to understand or to know where we're going least and that is our situation in Iraq. Yeah. How do you see that and how do you what do you think lies ahead for us in Iraq? Sure. Sometime this year we will start seeing a significant pull down of, of troops that the United States has in over in Iraq. And you know the curious thing is Kent, some people will say oh it's because of the elections. Well it is. It's because of the Iraqi elections. Mm. Because now for the first time you have a democratic government in the Middle East that just turns centuries or thousands of years of history and problems on its head and creates opportunity for millions of people that haven't had it before, removing a tyrant that was astride the Arab world and <clears throat> excuse me, uh, creating all sort of disruption and mass killing. But now to have a democracy in Iraq, uh, what a difference, what an achievement. It's part of George uh, W. Bush's philosophy that he expressed in his second inaugural, saying America must be an exporter of democracy. It is not easy, but in the long run, we're going to look back and say it was worth it. Let me change the subject just a little bit to another eye country. Sure. Uh, a neighbor, Iran. Iran. Uh, the, and the nuclear things that keep popping up, at least in the news, to the average citizen sure. like me. I read it and I, I wonder, should I worry about what's going on in Iran? And should we as a country worry about it? Well, you know, several years ago, uh, we had what was called the Rumsfeld Commission. This was before Don Rumsfeld was Secretary of Defense for mm. President Bush. It was during the Clinton years. There was a report there, and I read the classified portions of it too, talking about Iraq, talking about Iran, talking about North Korea. And part of, the, of what happens is they are working, or had been working, on nuclear weapons. But having nuclear capacity is not the same as being able to threaten the United States you have to have a delivery system. Now, if that's uh, for a, uh, an unsophisticated nuclear weapon, that means you have to have something big like a rocket or a truck or whatever to deliver it. Uh, Iran is not in a position to be able to ship nuclear weapons to the United States because they can't build them small enough to sneak them through and they certainly don't have rockets. But they are working on it and they are a destabilizing force uh, in the Mideast. That's why it's important that we take that threat very seriously. Uh, North Korea, uh, on the other hand, has a little bit more capability in delivering something. So when we talk about nuclear threats, it's important to talk about Iran, but it's also important to talk about North Korea. And of course, we've taken Iraq out of the equation. Yes. Do you, do you think the present administration is handling the North Korean and the uh, Iranian situations uh, appropriately? I, I think so. Uh, obviously, in anything that's as intricate and as detailed and uh, tricky uh, as this is, hindsight is always your best uh, indicator. But uh, I think that, yes, they're being very responsible and they're using the international community to, to put leverage and pressure on those countries. Let's bring things a little closer to home. Uh, yeah. Back to Oklahoma. What issues in Congress uh, are being dealt with, either by you or your uh, uh, contemporaries, uh, that are important to Oklahomans? Right. Everybody is concerned with, with homeland security. I'm the vice chair of the Appropriations Subcommittee for Homeland Security, which of course is not only at the borders, it's also uh, inside. And we saw, with the consequence of the Murrah Building bombing, we saw the impact that uh, uh, terrorists, whether it's domestic or foreign, uh, the impact they, that it can have on any part of the nation. 
So that is some of the most important work, I believe, uh, that I do. And that also includes border security. Years ago, uh, before we had such a lack of enforcement of our laws, the problems with illegal immigration, the expenses of it, uh, th the thumbing uh, of noses at the law was basically a border problem. Now it is a problem that is integrated and has gotten into the entire country. Uh, homeland security and, and border security is no longer something that's just along the Rio Grande or along the coasts or uh, up with the Canadian border. Uh, it has come home to everyone, and I think that's a, one of the issues that Congress has not done enough on. Uh, I, I'm glad that the House passed some strengthening of border security just uh, a couple of months ago. The Senate has not yet acted on it, but I think that's one of the most important efforts that we have underway. How is the working relationship within the Oklahoma congressional delegation, the uh, other uh, representatives that we all elect from around the state, how is that relationship? I think we've got a good relationship with all the people. Obviously in the House we have four Republicans and one Democrat, mm -hmm. uh, but in this case uh, it is not a wall of separation. Now, you will see a lot of partisan votes. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, there, there's been some amazing things, like on the energy bill to help improve the production of energy, so important to Oklahoma. The Democrats all locked up uh, against it. So with the exception of things like that, I think we've got a, a good uh, rapport and a good relationship among the five of us that serve Oklahoma in the House. And I think we have two good senators as well. Just real briefly in about 20 or 30 seconds, tell us about the leadership problems in the House mm -hmm. with, on the Republican side. Are those going to be solved pretty quickly, do you think? We have elections coming up the 2nd of February uh, in, in the House to, to change some leadership, of course, with Tom DeLay stepping down as majority leader. Uh, there may be some, some ripple effects. Personally, uh, I'm supporting Congressman John Chaddick of Arizona because I believe John stands the strongest both for conservative principles and for a change agent. Uh, we've, uh, you know, it, it, it's challenging. When you get a majority, sometimes uh, you, you get some momentum that doesn't always go in the right direction. We don't have enough principle-centered leadership right now in Washington, D.C. I think John Chaddock has the opportunity to provide more of that, and that's why I'm supporting him. Let me jump in and get sure. into a break. We're visiting with uh, Congressman Ernest Iztuk. We'll be back in just a minute. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. S.M. McGladry. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. R.S.M. McGladry. In Oklahoma City, the phone number is 405-843-5311. Hello, anybody home? Hi. Digital Max, welcome to the neighborhood. Hello, kid. Whoa, I haven't seen a digital tangle like that since... Yeah. You need Cox Connections. With one connection, you get the whole digital enchilada. Kind of like this. Wow. What are you waiting for? Get one connection to all your digital services from Cox. I think I pulled something. Your friend in the digital age. The Cox Channel. More sports. More bands. More cheerleaders. More fun. Nobody does more local sports. And nobody does it better.
And welcome back to The Verdict. I'm Kent Myers, and uh, Mick Cornett will be back with us in a couple of weeks. But uh, this Sunday, we are visiting with uh, the Honorable Ernest Istook, the congressman from the 1st District. 5th District, I've said that twice. That's and why okay. I'm trying to put you over in the 1st District, I don't know, but I apologize. That's all right. To the, to the people of the 5th District, we want to keep you here. Uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about something that's been in the news an awful lot, and that's the... Uh, the uh, uh, Publicity about uh, lobbyist activities in Washington, Abr Abramoff and, uh, and, uh, and the sure. like. Uh, there's a good movement afoot apparently to try to get some changes made in how lobbyists are able to deal with uh, elected representatives and uh, appointed representatives sure. of the government. Uh, what do you think is appropriate, if anything, in regard to any changes in the rules? Right. Well, first, let's understand the origin of the problem. Okay. It, it, it's twofold. One has to do with the size and scope of government. The other has to do with people that are dishonest uh, in what they do. Any time that government gets bigger, and certainly we've seen the federal government is too big and spends too much, but big government means big lobbying. It means big interest. It means big issues. And the bigger government is, the more people are going to be attracted uh, to it to try to make their living lobbying members of Congress. So that's one of the issues. Uh, the other is the challenge of people that are doing dishonest things. I mean, I can't tell you, Kent, how sick I was in my stomach when I learned about Duke Cunningham, someone that I've considered a friend, and found out that he had been being bribed. Uh, to do the actions that he had undertaken. Apparently just confessed to it as well. Uh, yeah, pled, pled guilty, yeah. okay. Jack Abramoff uh, has pled guilty. He's somebody that I knew peripherally, never did any sort of, you know, work with him on anything, and I'm glad of that. Uh, but to find out the way that he was ripping people off and using undue influence with people, uh, so, you know, that attached a taint. So I told people, you know, hey, any money that I ever received that was in any way connected to him, I've, I've, I've given it away, Yeah. okay. but. The key is honest people. I mean, you will always be accused of dishonest motives. You have to have a thick skin uh, to be in politics. People always make wrongful accusations, but you've got to make decisions on their merits. Now, when it comes to changing the rules about the relationships, no rule change will prevent people from being dishonest. What you have to have as much as possible is greater disclosure. And I, I think that is the, is the key to reform, is disclosure as opposed to necessarily increasing the number of prohibitions, expanding the red tape, making things more complicated. That doesn't help anybody. More transparency, I guess. Yes. Uh, Senator McCain has, has come forth with some uh, specific suggestions. Uh, are any of those uh, sensible as far as you're concerned? I haven't really studied uh, things. I, I, you could ask me about a specific issue, but if you say, just tell me about what John McCain's doing. I couldn't tell you what John yeah. McCain's doing. I look at the idea, not the origin. Well, it looked to me like his proposals were more new rules and uh, tighter strictures uh, in addition to transparency. But uh, as far as you're concerned, make the process open and uh, right. viewable by all, and that will take care of it. Absolutely. More, if it can be taken care and, of. It. And quit making political accusations. I mean, we've seen so many people try to misuse the congressional ethics process just to attack their political opponents. That makes it hard to separate the actual dishonest occasions from the false accusations. Uh, that hurts the effort to police people when it's used, when it's misused politically. Uh, let me change the subject. You bet. Uh, you've had 14 years in Congress and by all accounts 14 productive years in Congress. What's been the one or two most satisfying things you've been involved with during that time? And then when you finish, I'm going to turn it the around other side, and say sure. the other side, sure. One of the most satisfying, I mean, we actually achieved, unfortunately only for a couple of years, but we actually did achieve a balancing of the federal budget mm -hmm. uh, for a couple of years. We had discipline. This was like 98, 99. I wish it had endured, but that was an important accomplishment. Welfare reform. It's not just because it saved taxpayers billions of dollars, but by putting in tough love, time limits on how long somebody that's working age and able-bodied can remain on different parts of public assistance. We haven't finished it, but you know, 20 million people became self-sufficient that wouldn't have otherwise. It's not just the, the savings to taxpayers of billions, it's the savings of lives, of changing what happens in the next generation. And we need to finish that process. We have not covered all of public assistance under those same standards. And uh, something else that I'm pleased with, uh, 
my legislation was the only one that passed Supreme Court muster in trying to protect kids from indecent material on the internet. Basically it says when the federal government has helped to pay for a computer or access uh, through a computer, we're going to use filtering software. That's why it's being used in schools and libraries because of the law uh, that I got passed and it's the only one that the U.S. Supreme Court has said yes that is acceptable under First Amendment requirements, whereas other laws that have tried to address that problem have been struck down. So those are some of the things I've enjoyed, plus a lot of things I've done for Oklahoma. Yeah. Can, I, can I give just Absolutely. a couple of things Absolutely. Oh, I've been able to help this state with hundreds of millions of dollars of extra transportation money we would not have received otherwise because we don't have the infrastructure we need mm -hmm. to bring more jobs and opportunity to Oklahoma. Uh, the Crosstown Expressway, I-40 here in Oklahoma City, I, with others in the delegation, uh, helped bring $300 million for that. Uh, the state still hadn't paid anything to help, but that. The river, uh, $15 million that I gained from the Army Corps of Engineers is what put in the landscaping, uh, put in the reestablishment of wetlands, put the trails in place, uh, the things that helped flesh out what the MAPS projects had done there, the new federal campus downtown, uh, some of the revitalization of areas like Automobile Alley uh, that had a federal component in it, uh, in aerospace, the new customs facility uh, at Will Rogers, the new MRO center that Boeing is putting a billion dollars into that I got the seed money to get that thing started uh, out at Tinker. Uh, and of course, the high-tech jobs that we are getting in medical research. I helped change the whole system and the whole rules so that now Oklahoma is one of the fastest growing medical research places in the country. Tens of millions of dollars each year are coming in for medical research, some of the best paying jobs any place in the country. So those are some of the things I've been pleased to do for Oklahoma. What's Part been of them. What's been a disappointment to you? Not because of what you did or didn't do, but right. just generally speaking, what disappoints you? Um, one, we're not having enough principle-centered leadership in Washington, but two, we still have not enacted a balanced budget requirement as part of the U.S. Constitution. Oklahoma, like almost every state in the country, has a balanced budget requirement. I'm the principal author now in Washington, D.C., of trying to get a balanced budget amendment into the Constitution to protect the next generation so that we don't spend away our kids' inheritance. So the failure to adopt that, and I'm still working on it, Kent, okay. but the failure to adopt that is the biggest disappointment. Real quickly, uh, because I want to save a little bit of time at the end for you to say something to our viewers personally, but uh, real quickly, what would you tell a young person thinking about public service? I would say it's worthwhile, but it's challenging because uh, you have to develop a thick skin. Uh, and, and I don't say that because I want to be insensitive, but because you have to be willing to, to suffer some things that people will say, questioning your judgment, questioning your ethics, and so forth. Uh, politics is too messy and too nasty a business uh, these days. It's because the stakes are so high. Some people believe in a philosophy of more government and more government control and government as the big daddy for the rest of us. I don't believe in that. Uh, I believe in government that enables people to achieve their God-given potential and conservative principles. You're not resigning. You're not leaving. Right. You're going to finish out your term. Sure. But tell our viewers what you'd like to tell them about your service and uh, how, how you feel about serving Oklahoma. You bet. And of course, I'm finishing out my term and I'm running for governor, which is, which is why yeah. I won't be running for re-election. Okay. But in Washington, D.C., I brag that Oklahomans are the salt of the earth. And the most important thing I'd like to say to people in Oklahoma is thank you. Not, not really so much thank you for letting me serve you, but thank you for being the great people that you are. I brag about you. Thank you. Great people we got to go to break. Thank you. You bet, Kent. It's took. Good to see you. I'll see you soon. Already. Welcome back. Okiwani is an Indian name for a place where children play. When we obtained the camp, we found a lot of oil debris left in the woods. We saw a commercial about how the oil and natural gas industry cleans up old oil well sites. We called the OERB and they agreed to remove tons of concrete and steel. It didn't cost us a thing. Thousands of children have left their footprints on this land. Thanks to the oil and gas industry, they will for a long time to come. Bringing out the best in each student, 
That is the simple goal and tradition of Heritage Hall. The focus on the individual shapes the educational experience at Heritage Hall. Each student benefits from small classes, able, dedicated teachers, a solid academic curriculum, and exceptional co-curricular programs of athletics, arts, community service, and other activities, parental involvement, personalized counseling, and the development of responsibility, integrity, and love of learning. If you want education taught with pride, then you want Heritage Hall. You need this one to get satellite HD, this one's your DVR, this one's for local channels, mm. this one's... What are we supposed to do with all this stuff? Got you covered. Oh, by the way, that old satellite stuff makes a great end table. That doesn't look so bad, right, honey? Don't live in satellite denial. Get the latest entertainment without the hassles. From Cox, your friend in the digital age. Not sure where you're headed? NATS can help you find your way. It's the National Athletic Testing System. We call it NATS. You'll call it your launching pad to success. NATS will give you a standardized evaluation that will help you measure your performance and give that information to college coaches so they can accurately evaluate your potential. NATS also helps with academic support. Join with the Oklahoma High School Football Coaches Association and head for success at www.nats.us. Welcome back. Thanks to Congressman Ernest Istook for joining us today. His website is www.istook.com and ours is theverdict.tv. Next week we'll have him back again and talk about his race for governor. See you then. The preceding program was produced by the Production Services Group at Cox Communications, exclusively for the Cox Channel.